Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego, a bit of a rainy San Diego actually, unusually so. And today I am delighted to be joined by Dr. Philip Zimmerman, who is in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. How are you doing, Philip? Man, I am doing fantastic, John. Glad to be with you. We've got your uh, San Diego weather here today in uh, Baton Rouge, so <laughs> we're doing really well. Oh, good. Well, so that's where it went. Good. Good to know. Um, and Philip is a master coach and consultant, uh, as well as an entertaining and engaging speaker. And uh, what we are going to talk about today is this uh, is this sounds like a mouthful, but there's a lot behind this, and that's why I'm excited to talk about it. But full connected age transformation by millennial leaders of the workplace for sustainability and resilience to innovate market sector disruption. Okay, so for what, when will you talk about full connected age transformation, what do you mean by that? I think I think we've witnessed it with the pandemic. Um, just just as, as, the, as just the, the beginning of the mm -hmm. virtual workforce, uh, the ability for the millennial talent that was in the workforce and the extra talent that was in the workforce, not only to embrace that new challenge, which the boomers and the older extras were faced with on the management scheme of how do we, how do we work remotely? Uh, the, the, the extras and the millennials quickly stepped in, got on their conferencing uh, software and we're productive. This is the thing that I discover with my clients when I do coaching with them was that the idea of uh, how, you know, they were really worried about losing productivity and hoping to get back into the office soon. And when they got their, really their second quarter results in, in the end, of, at the end of June, they were just astounded that their productivity with a remote workforce actually went up. Uh, I have several clients, they had their best year ever in uh, 2020 uh, with a remote workforce. And they have a lot of them that just said they're a lot of their, their staff is not coming back to work. This is just the tip of the iceberg of, of what's coming into the workplace. And the reason why I say this transformational uh, transformation with, with this millennial talent and, and Gen Z coming is with the introduction of AI into the workplace, especially in the sales arena. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so more and more sales are being conducted online through direct uh, uh, marketing through feeds, you know, video feeds or, or, or if somebody's on YouTube or, or Instagram or on Facebook on one of these social media platforms, you got these, these uh, 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 advertising feeds in, in all those products that uh, direct, direct email marketing, uh, this uh, texting now to, for, for direct marketing. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things happening in the sales industry from an innovation perspective that if you're not, if you, you may know what it is, I'm a boomer, I know what it is. I have no idea how they're, how they're doing it. The Xers and millennials know exactly what it is, and they know exactly how to do it. And that's the that's what I'm really encouraging business leaders today to do is to turn over some of their really critical areas of leadership within their organization to their sharp millennial and sharp Xer talent, who will be able to transform their business because it's gonna it's gonna happen. It, it, yeah. Disruption is coming uh, with, with yeah. AI coming into the workplace. No, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And I think it's been interesting that the pandemic, um, if there is a silver lining to it, but I think that it definitely it definitely accelerated digital transformation. A lot of people were, were paying lip service to that before uh, the pandemic, and then it forced it upon them. But to your point here is, um, number one, if you embrace the virtual world um, from a from an organizational point of view, which we actually did man, six years ago, we decided that uh, you know there were some things that yeah, if you had programmers, maybe they wanted to be together, but that isn't even always the case. But ultimately, don't you want to have the best organization and the best skill sets you can have? And you don't always need them full time either. So not only are you reconstructing your organization to take in the virtual world but also to be able to slot in and slot out some variable resources as well. That, that, that's correct. It's, it's, it's a great assessment, right? Right now what's happening, uh, it's a, not a well-advertised phenomena that's happening culturally. Uh, I did a lot of research on, on a doctorate degree on, millenn on the millennial generation in particular in the workforce uh, to develop a coaching program, which I did included in a book I, I published called Unleash the Millennials and Save the World. And in this book, I, I highlight a very unknown, it's not talked about, it's called, I call it the the, uh, the, the missing uh, Gen X generation, the, the missing mm -hmm. Xers. Uh, 
generally, there's about 80 million boomers, uh, anywhere from 80 to 100 million uh, millennials. Gen X in between those two large generations is about 40 million. It depends on the demographer, but that, those are good round estimates. Yeah. Meaning that there's only half as many Xers as there are boomers and or millennials on the, on the other extreme. The half, about half the boomers have already retired. So there's about 40 million boomers left in the workforce. If you were to take those general 80 million numbers representative in the workforce, over, about half of them have already retired. That means that the, for, the, for the 40 million Xers that were, that were available, for those spots, they're probably already occupying a, a boomer position already. So for the next boomer that retires in the next five years, and most of them will be out of the workforce in the next seven years, for the next boomer that retires, there's not an extra to replace them. Now, the extra may take that position, but now this boomer position that the extra formerly occupied needs to be filled by somebody. There is no extra behind them to fill it. Uh, and so what's going to happen in the workplace, and you're gonna, I, I've seen this in job postings just, I mean, literally within the last few days. Uh, if you go back to your job postings and just look for management openings, when these uh, uh, states started to reopen their businesses, what they discovered was a lot of their boomer talent, older boomer talent just weren't coming back for a variety of reasons. You know, they've, they've, they've been working at home for a year. They said, I'm not going to go back to the office. I'm not going to go back and live in the city, whatever it is. I'm just staying away. And so these openings for these high level management positions are popping open. And so what I'm encouraging, this goes along with this whole business of transformation, mm -hmm. is how do you quickly align, develop, and advance your millennial talent to occupy jobs that they're not, they're not qualified for, they don't have the experience for, and they, and they don't have the business um, acumen in order to, to be there? Well, you, you have to be able to do that. And that's what I, uh, and I, I, I encourage them to use technology, learning management systems, LMS systems, mm -hmm. to build in their own development programs of how do we develop individuals? What are career paths available in our company? Who's retiring? What's opening up? Uh, and then provide in an LMS system, uh, the tools necessary for the millennial, their millennial talent and Gen Z talent to log on to, to find out this is the career path I'm currently occupying. How do I get aligned best in the position that I'm in and to, and to achieve at the next level? And then what development is available for me in order to accomplish that? And then once I accomplish that, how do I know I'm actually going to be considered for the promotion to get to get advancement? All that can be handled by an LMS system. Uh, and yeah. I encourage companies that aren't familiar with them to get very familiar with them and start implementing them internally to uh, keep your millennial talent. What's going to happen is if you don't do this, if you just if you say, OK, uh, Susan or John's been working in that position for the last five years, they're super important. If, if they vacate that position, you know, we're dead yeah. and you have an opening up above John or Susan. And they're not, and they're not advanced. They're going to find another open because there's going to be openings all over the place. They're going to find another opening at another organization, and they're going to take it. And so you're going to lose your ta your top talent if you don't advance them, align them, develop and advance them. Yeah, and if you think about it uh, as well, Philip, uh, just what we were talking about a moment ago is that uh, virtual working is opening up, and uh, and obviously there's a lot of there's a lot of jobs and roles that can be fulfilled virtually. So therefore. If you are that millennial that you just referenced, if I'm sitting here and I'm like the best at what I do and all of that great stuff and the job opens up above me and I don't get it, hey, I can now go and look for jobs pretty much anywhere and I don't have to move from where I am. And I think that's the big, big challenge now with organizations is that they need to get proactive in saying, OK, our talent pool nowadays wants to choose where they live. Maybe they want to work slightly differently. You know, maybe we need to reconstruct our, our hours, you know, how we engage. A lot of things to consider, but if you don't do that, you're gonna see your talent, your talent pool shrink very fast. Oh, and, and, the, and the way that the, well, okay. 50% of the workforce is currently millennial. This is a, in the United States and globally. By 2025, that's just four years away, 75% of the global workforce is going to be a millennial. Why is that? Well, because of that small Gen X generation yeah. I was just talking about. So they're going to occupy 75% of the, of the seats in, in companies around the world. They're going to start doing business like they want to do business. And what that means is if you're not on board with what they're doing, they're just going to eliminate, they're just going to eliminate you. They're not going to buy from you. They're not, they're not going to be your, your client. And mm -hmm. they're not going to be allow you to be their service provider because you're not providing things in the fashion that they want things to be provided. And again, I go back to this AI, AI analysis. There is AI available in almost every facet of what we're what we do, whether that be in sales or product uh, products that we produce or services we provide. AI is available to help eliminate a lot of 
activities that is currently done by human hand and minds and you know thinking is to uh, you know what I what I'm, I'm encouraging by the clients that I'm working with now is to have to institute what I call the millennial dream team within their organization take three to five of your top millennials and say okay I got three we have three tasks for you the first task is to find out every system that we're currently using and all of our institutional knowledge that we currently have and what's the format that it, that it's currently in and what what needs to be upgraded I have a client that had a very, I mean, they were using this and they're still using it. A, a very complex uh, database that was an access based from a 1989, 1989, not even 19, right. 1989 access database that they're still using in 2021. I was like, I, I, you, you have to be kidding me. Well, they only got developed at works. And so we keep using it. Right. Those things are all, all around in companies all around. Is that That's the first thing. Have them identify all these things and then so that you can start eliminating them. The next one is to find out where's all the institutional knowledge. If it can't be Put in digital form in the next four years it, it is garbage. It might as well be thrown down the track. Nobody's going to look at it because mm -hmm. it's all going to be AI. It's got to go into the machine somewhere. And the last one is to is to that once they know everything that you know, where all your information is, how you do all the stuff that you're doing, the, the, their last job is to develop the disruptor that will take your business out. Is to yeah. say, okay, now that you know what we do, how we do it, what and, and what and the why we're doing it, what's the base reason why this is being done? Not because we're being hired to do it, but what's the base reason anybody's doing this? Find the disruptor that will that will eliminate that need, and uh, or or supply or provide it in, in a different way that we're providing it that will eliminate this and let us know what that is because people yeah. are working on those disruptors currently and you need to know what's, you need to know what's coming. No, no, absolutely, and I think it's always a good exercise to look at how somebody could take your company out. Uh, uh, I totally agree with you here, but all of this, uh, all of this, Philip, it definitely, it, it, number one, it requires a deliberate strategy, right? Because oh, if yeah. you just oh, yeah. let these things happen to you organically, um, who knows how that's going to turn out, number one. But second off, the people who do it deliberately are going to get ahead of you. And I think everybody is a little, you know, because we said the, the pandemic sped up all the digital transformation, everybody's a little bit behind the eight ball where most people are here. Uh, so this is something that I think digital transformation and, and leveraging the millennial talent and everything that you say here is something that now requires a deliberate strategy in every organization. Uh, you know, that, that's, a, that's a great point. A lot of people will, of course, we're in the, coming up on the end of the second quarter. Um, you know, I guess we just started the second quarter, but we're going to come up on it pretty soon. When, when May hits, they're going to start working on the plans for yeah. 2022. Uh, all that starts in, in the third quarter, starting in June and July, they start working on the 2022 plans is that I encourage companies to start looking at these things, as you said, deliberately of how can they transform their company? How can they take what they're doing in using AI and using technology to uh, not eliminate jobs? I mean, if, mm -hmm. I mean that, that's, one, that's one fear. It's a boomer's fear is, hey, I'm, they're going to eliminate my job. It's not about eliminating jobs. It's about keeping up with what, where the market is going. Um, we, we have a huge shift and there's a lot of shifting going on currently. Culturally, you see it every day in, in the news and, and really all in our country, all over the world. Culturally, there's a huge shift going on. And that same shift is going to come into the work, it's coming into the workplace. And it's when it really starts to hit, it's really, it hadn't really even started to hit yet. It's just now the pandemic forced a lot of it. Uh, I'm just, things are going to change dramatically. You just go online and just look up AI uh, business solutions, and you will find it, if you're in business and you haven't looked it up lately, go up for AI business solutions and type in your sector or your market that you're in, and you're going to see what's coming. Uh, and if you're not, and you have to have people in your organization that can one go to find what these what find out what's coming, find out how it's going to impact your business, and how can you incorporate it into what you're doing. Yeah. And looking, and I think part of the, I think part of the uh, issue here, Philip, is that I think a lot of people are leery about AI because it was overhyped a number of years ago. It was like AI is going to replace everything and and all of this. And I think people got a little bit turned off by that or fearful, whichever. But but to the point that you're making is that if if you take again a deliberate approach to AI and you look at what can AI do to free up 
people to do more high value things because let's oh, face yeah. it today that's the thing is we do a lot of low value things ai can help uh, help remove those or help us to be more informed so it raises everybody and i think that's the challenge that companies have is that they have to go back and look at ai differently put all the hype aside it's not going to take all the jobs away whatever and say okay how can i leverage this so now we actually elevate what people do rather than diminish it uh, let me give you a quick example here. Uh, my wife and I were having a conversation. In fact, this has happened several times since, the, since then. My wife and I were having a conversation uh, about a particular uh, item that we were hoping to buy our grandkids. Yeah, we have grandkids. And within an hour, it was on her newsfeed on the side of her Instagram post, uh, advertisement for this, what we were just talking about. And and it was like, this is really, and so we did it again. And sure enough, within about an hour, there whatever we're talking about was, now we we're not online anywhere. You know, they're listening mm -hmm. to us on their phone. This that's AI. AI is, is they've they've written an algorithm into the software that's listening on the phone. It hears a, a keyword. It has advertisers that say when they hit when the, someone says this keyword, pop my ad up there. They pay the aggregator whatever five cents mm -hmm. every time they do that. But that's AI. And so when you're in contact with your clients to, to be able to have AI be able to assist you when the clients you're in the discussion with a client and the client might be mentioning something and then you have you don't really know what that is AI know what that is, knows what that is and knows where they can get resources to assist that client and what they what they need. That's that's what AI is going to be able to do It's going to be able to provide especially in the sales arena when you're when you have a when you have a client with a need and, the, and they're you're trying to provide you're trying to satisfy that need there's only so much institutional knowledge that you that we can possess in our brain and yeah. have access to immediately with ai you, you've got the entire world of, of information and providers and vendors who can assist you in supplying that that need that the client has it's yeah and and the biggest yeah and that is you know the biggest complaint that everybody has is like you know you can't you know you can't create more time however Though, if you embrace digital transformation, automation, and AI, you can actually create more time insofar as you can remove a lot of the stuff that prevents people from spending more time in sales, for instance, spend more time actually selling and engaging with prospects and customers. So again, I think, I think that's where we need to reorient our, our thinking and look at this as ways that can help us instead of something to, to be afraid of or something that'll be forced upon you in the end. Uh, 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 you just reminded me of something, you know, the one of the complaints that we all that I'm a boomer. So my generation has had about millennials is that, you know, they don't, they don't like face to face contact, which is not true. And they don't like personal inter interaction, which is not true. I've got all this in my book, but you know, these are false assumptions we have about them. But what, what that, that is, is that, you know, we say, well, we need to have the handshake and the personal conversation or the personal phone call with the client in order to make these business deals for them. Man, they much rather write an AI routine and then be communicated in their company with an AI routine. And they, they don't have to talk mm -hmm. to anybody. I mean, it's yeah. just not an insult toward them. That's really how they how they want to do business. Uh, AI can it can it can evaluate bids, uh, um, uh, right? So you know, I've I've, I've had uh, if you put a resume out to look for a job on Indeed or or uh, LinkedIn or whatever, mm -hmm. the, the company is going to get fifteen hundred resumes for this one job. They don't look at the resumes. AI goes in and examines every resume, looks for keywords. It kicks back the top twenty. They have a secondary. Uh, program that goes in there and re, 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 fine tunes it and it kicks to the management, the top five or top 10, whatever they say, the candidates for this position. Those are the only resumes they ever look at. Uh, well, how do they do? Because they can't look at 1500 resumes mm -hmm. or, or 10,000 resumes. So they have to use some, for, some sort of filter. And that's what AI, AI provides you. So no matter what marketplace you're in, you can find a solution that AI can provide for you that will, as you said, gives you back time that you would otherwise be overwhelmed. You're no longer going to be overwhelmed. Yeah. Um, and listen, that's a great point for anybody applying for jobs or doing your resumes. Make sure you have the right keywords in your oh, resume. Yeah. Don't don't just dust off your the resume that you wrote a couple of years ago or like whatever and just add in your latest job. I mean, you need to really go, you need to look at it as, as Philip po rightly pointed out, you need to look at how it's going to be used. And the fact is, as he said, there's a lot of AI going to be used in artificial. Therefore, if you don't have the right keywords, you're never going to make it to the next round. Yeah, same thing with sales. I mean, when, you, when you're responding yeah. to a, a, a bid or a proposal, make sure that your proposal language that you have has the keywords that are asked in the 
in the document itself, in the proposal document. Otherwise, the because the, they're going to use AI, because again, they're going to shop. They're going to shop not locally or regionally. Mm-hmm. They're going to shop globally in a lot of instances, yeah. and they've got an AI aggregator out there who's who's, you know, narrowing down the choices of the vendors available, and then you want to make sure that your proposal uh, is a winning proposal. No, no, absolutely. So uh, just to finish off, what would be your one piece of advice that you would offer to companies who maybe haven't thought a lot about this right now? What would be a good starting point? Uh, do not, the, great, the best starting point is do not underestimate the millennial talent in your organization to take you to a level that you have never imagined. The, this is the most educated generation in human history. That should not be underemphasized. Most educated generation in human history. They are the only generation, even more than Generation Z coming after them. And Generation Z is millennials on steroids. But the millennials are the most capable generation to handle whatever is going to come in the next five to 10 years. It's not a boomer. It's not an X are going to be able to handle it. The millennials will be able to handle it. So just and allow them to step up and and uh, get a get a shot to hit in the ball because uh, they're going to take you to places that you have never even imagined with what's coming yeah listen fantastic listen thanks very much uh, all of dr phillips information is going to be below this video but before we go please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do i, I have a, a coaching and consulting business uh it's engineeringleadershipdesign.com i work with business executives to help prepare their millennial talent what I call next generation leader initiative for advancement within their company of how to align, develop and advance their talent. And then I wrote a book, Unleash the Millennials and Save the World, where I talk about the coming reality of, of what we're experiencing even today. I had it, my book it was kind of prophetic when I wrote it. Um, and I, I put in there the differences in the generation and why the millennial generation needs to be unleashed because they have, they are, they're going to change the world. And they're going to change the world, whether you, whether you want them to or not. And so my encouragement to business executives that I work with is to let them let them up to the plate and let them let them try and guide them along the way uh, because they're going to take you again they're going to take you to places that you've never imagined uh, going as a business in a, in a positive way not in a negative way in a very positive <laughs> way yeah listen thanks very much uh, again uh, Dr. Philip and thank you all for joining us and I will see you for another expert interview really soon thank you yeah.